Kerwin Frost. Do, 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 da. Thank you for tuning in for part two of the interview with Lucas Sabat, my best friend. We're back here at the Chateau Marmont. Back at the Chateau. We're, we're still at the Chateau. We're still at the Chateau. We've been here all along. At the Chateau Marmont. On Sunset. So, Luca. <laughs> um, so. Um, um, what were you doing? When did you start Spaghetti Boys? When did I start Spaghetti Boys? Whoa. Yeah, let's get into it. Because you want to talk about my first job. Let's talk about. Um, so. I had. Uh, with, with Spaghetti Boys, I think even before I had a following, I wanted to 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 start kind of this platform that could have everything I'm into, and it be, be less about me. Mm-hmm. So um, so I had the idea for it, and and it came from a the name came from this this. Uh, documentary I saw on Mobsters, it was Cocaine Cowboys. And there was this five second part where they're like, oh, the Spaghetti Boys are like the, like the three guineas from New York, like they were hired hitmen. So like, but that just stuck to me and I like that name. It had nothing to do with the food. I was just like very into like mob movies at the time. Yeah. So I started that and then um, when I was in Harlem, uh, there was a spot where I would chill and it was called the Lennox Lodges and uh, this kid named Ray, he moved to, to Harlem, and I met him there on the Legends, and he was this punk rock kid from Kansas. Um, but we just kind of hit it off. It was like, I wanted a DJ, so it was, it was going to be like merch for, for, for me DJ, even though I hadn't DJed anything yet. <laughs> you know what I mean? But we were going to put out like, uh, like zines and, and, and these photo books and all this stuff under Spaghetti Boys. Um, and I think, I think Mike the Ruler has like the first ever printed Spaghetti Boys piece, and it was there was a Z at the end of the the boys, and it was oh. on on the back of this denim jacket, and it was like a photo of Spaghetti, and it said it over it, and it was like, that was the first time I was like, fuck, don't use the food, yeah, yeah, yeah. because it just makes it so fucking epic. So <laughs> we took out that. Um, I think it, it grew more as a... Oh, all right, so our, our first project was with um, Theophilus London, who I, I had met on on Instagram when I like barely had a following. This is prior to like the whole, like, oh yeah, actually no, I'm retired. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, so I met him and, and uh, we kind of just hit it off and I was like, yeah, it would be so funny if we did if we did this, uh, this like, this party where I DJ and and uh, the office son and performed, and it was gonna be called Changes because at the time I don't know if you remember I had the Changes show because because sure? during that time it was all of our point of transition, and you would hear like Wow you changed Wow so, you changed yeah. yeah and then and then the way I would like respond to that was just like. I would always have like coins on me, or I'm like, yo, did you see the receipt? <laughs> you changed, fetch. And 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 uh, but this kind of that play on word. So I would not because you actually gateway perfectly to the next question. I was gonna ask you about the changes show because I actually the other day, so crazy. I walk into the Baltazar, the restaurant. The girl whose space that was, yeah, works at Baltazar. Wow, what? So I think waitress? No, no, like a man, like main manager. Or something. Wow. Yeah, um, so, um... I wasn't done talking, you interrupted me. Wait, no, 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 but my question is, like, it was, Changes was a photo show. It became that. Okay. So, we needed this venue, and back in, back in the Soho days, you could just walk in so and then find someone who has a gallery, and I just thought that would happen, so I was walking, and... Uh, you know, Harit Guzman was closing the Soho Arts Club or something was going on. So we couldn't use the Soho Arts Club like how we were using it for every other thing we were doing. 
or he wouldn't give it to me yet mm. because I didn't have an, enough followers yet. Ah. Because you know it, it was uh, the cloud exchange. So, but I met. We were we were close with Frank Shop Shop, and the owner, uh, classic dirtbag, like but also amazing person. Uh, I ran into him and I was like, yeah, I, I want to do like this party. And he's like, oh, like I, I know a guy who has a gallery. Fuck. And, <laughs> and he takes me to meet this guy, and then they open up the gates in, in, the, L, in the LES, like, across the street from that skate park. Like the under the, park. Yeah, under the train and all that Yeah, stuff. and it's this huge fucking white space. And he's like, yeah, you can have this. And I'm like, mm, mm, okay, all right, well, we got to fill it with something. So then that, that week, I was like, you know what, like, uh, we're photographers for the week. So I started taking photos and it was to fill this gallery space and I have it empty and I was catching the gnarly as shit. So I would like, I, I met with Ham Preston and, take, and took like weird foot fetish photos of him with like one shoe off. But then I would meet with like, like random chicks and get like dumb weird photos with them. Like this chick flashing construction workers or like uh, in Harlem, there was this crime scene at 5 a.m. <laughs> Somebody got shot, I like got that. And like, um, me and Ray really didn't know how we were gonna like get these, but he worked at Eight Ball Zines, who were like the king of zines before No Wave in New York. Mm. And so he knew that you could just go to Kinko's and get like these huge like paper prints. So we had, this is all in a week's time of like figuring out what we're yeah, gonna fill yeah. it with, like how we're we gonna do this. So I'm like scheduling a shoot every single day. And, and then, and then we got this gallery space, and then you, the, like two days before, no, the day before. Yeah, yeah. Slept and I over. think this was like the first time I really like got respect for you because it was like one of the sweetest things that like you ever. It was like the first time you ever did something like extremely it was, like, the sweet. Proper, yeah, yeah. And we were all in this gallery space. It was me, Mike the Ruler, Austin, uh, and and you and Ray, and that was it. And it's this like white gallery space. Sleeping on the sleeping floor. Sleeping on the floor. Like no nothing, pillow. No, no nothing. Just sleeping on the bare floor like in the actual LES. actual concrete floor. And, yeah. and be, before, before uh, hours before the show, I think at night, you stayed up at night. Me and Michael put yeah. up the yeah. print. You were like, like completely deciding where to <laughs> display every single photo. And I was freaking out. And we didn't know anything about press. So there was no press. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't know that was an essential thing. So, um, and Austin hung up all his jeans on a wall because it yeah, was before he, he was in Spaghetti Boys. And it was just like, let's just do something like that. So he hung up like all these jeans he like drew on and we hung that up on a wall and we had all these photos yeah. and it was fire. The office London did a cover of Tupac Changes and, and that was the first Spaghetti Boys project. There was no press about it. But I was just like, all right, well, this is what it is now. But wait, wasn't there like this weird photo booth with something with Jewel? Remember they were giving out Jewel? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the owner of the gallery got like Jewel to be a sponsor for it. And I was so confused. I was like, what the fuck is this? Because it was before people had Jewels. And Way just, before, this is like They just had a booth and they were just giving them out for free, like to everyone. They're like, hey, I hope you like these. Dude. Yeah. And then we, remember they were like, trying to work with us or something. Yeah. And then we were mad pretentious and young. But we dropped the ball on that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We were like, sure. we were like, Jewel, what would we smoke? E cigarettes? Like, we smoked cigarettes. <laughs> Fast forward 2019, it's like the biggest company. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, that was the first project. I think through, but I, I didn't want to start Spaghetti Boys as a, even though like my following was growing during this time, being in this circle of kids, and I didn't, but more on the fashion side. Yeah. It was more on taking like fit photos, which is like cool, but like Spaghetti Boys wasn't supposed to be about clothes, but that's what people wanted to see. So, but I didn't wanna, I didn't wanna drop a, a, a full collection of something because I didn't fully understand, I knew I didn't understand. I still have that ringer too, by the way. Yeah, yeah, I didn't, well that wasn't even, oh, what, the changes one? I don't even have that. Um, I didn't fully understand the manufacturing business. I didn't understand. There's a lot of things that people don't tell you about how to start a brand. Yeah. And you learn that when you go through the fucking like shithole, it's the shit that you don't see on the gram. It's the how to make it in America shit where like you get fucked over by the person making your shit, uh, your shirts. And 
you gotta like release them next week or like you know people don't tell you about this so like there's a lot that I didn't know so I didn't but I knew I didn't know so I didn't want to just go out and drop a bunch of shit yeah it's like we gotta come out strong um I might be like jumping some hoops but I'm just gonna tell it as I remember it uh we did we we people knew that we were like the New York kids uh Harry and Preston had reached out to to me to to help do packaging at, at easy, easy season yeah. one and that was crazy that was huge because you were you were flexing it and it was like fuck damn that's so cool yeah. <laughs> it was like, but we got in the in the room in a different way yeah we we're like yeah. Kanye's little elves so it was like me Harry Preston Arthur Carr Austin all like packaging these like Yeezy invites which were what was it what was the first thing that it was the jackets yeah, yeah, it was yeah, the green the, the, no, was it the was it? no, 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 no. No, it was uh, the white. Was it the white? Yeah, it was. It was the white. The white. Uh, I don't know what the name. Uh, the Thai. The the fucking the scientists use it when they, you know. Not the windbreaker. You're talking. It about. was a white windbreaker. Okay, yeah, and it was vacuum sealed. Yeah. Yeah. So we were vacuum sealing it while like Yay is there and everything, and I and think then, that's how I met Virgil, for the first time was there. Mm. And um, and and you know he fucked with us, so we were like, I really wanted to to, cause you know I've been obsessed with like the OG shit when I was even a newcomer, and I was like, yo, it would be so cool to get a, a Ben Tro collab, because to me, like, kind of one of the reasons I started Spaghetti Boys was I saw Ben Tro perform at Fool's Gold Day Off in 2013. 2012, and it was Matthew Williams, Heron, Jown, and Ooh. Virgil all DJing, but they were terrible. And I was in the crowd as a kid seeing them, like, but they were all wearing matching outfits. They did such a terrible job. But to me, that was so cool. Cause there was like, they were like tuggling wires and making it look like they were doing something. <laughs> Travis Scott came out and performed wow. to do Quintana, but they kept playing the wrong version of the song. So Travis Scott just got angry and threw the mic on the floor and like walked off stage. But it was like seeing that set, I was like, wow, I want that. Like, that's like so funny. So I, I reached out, I, I got on my like uh, uh, Cindy Lou and the Grinch and started like interviewing each of them separately. Like, like pulling up on them. So like, what's going on with like Vendrell, all this. And my initial, my, my initial thing that I wanted, he had Off-White at the time. Mm. It was to get the Ventro collab with Spaghetti Boys. Yeah, yeah. And then Virgil was like, yo, let's just do, <laughs> let's just do Off-White. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, that Off-White had just started though. Yeah. It was like, yeah, yeah. And he was, he was just down. And I think we were like one of the first collabs he did. And he gave it to us without even having proof of concept. He just believed, he, we could do it. Yeah. And so we did we did him, um, Heron Preston and and, and Nas Pizza. Yeah. And the capsule was called Horror Disco. And it was supposed to be dropped on Halloween with a party. Uh anyways, dropped that. Um, it did great. It was fire. We were able to put a Casper the Friendly Ghost on an off white tee, was which was so like cool. ironically sick and just cool and we did that, and then we had a couple drops. Um, yeah, we had a couple drops, but they were like short drops, so it never fully had its like first drop. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think, uh, yeah, that was, that was basically that. We we kind of like went furthermore with the brand, but it never fully hit. Austin was always in and out of the group, yeah, because he would just get angry at some random shit all the time. He was like, all right, I quit. And I was like, yeah, and it was like, oh, all right. <laughs> um, and then eventually, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> well, but there's more to that story, but we'll get into that later. Yeah, yeah, we'll get into that um, later. Damn, that's crazy. I remember, like, when I was flexing the Yeezy Season 1 shit, because I was the first male model there, and then um, I was, like, the fit model. Mm -hmm. I remember seeing you guys walk in. Remember there's the moment you walked in? Yeah, yeah. Because it was uh, right next to the Adidas store, right? Yeah. Broadway, between Houston and like Bleecker or something. And you guys walked in, I was like, oh, what are they doing? Like, what the yeah. fuck is going on? I had Air Force Ones with duct tape over the check, 
with three stripes uh, I, I drew on it. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. You did, and then Kanye <laughs> freaked out when he saw those. He was like, that's hard. Yeah. <laughs> Where else did I see the duct tape on the Air Force Ones? Mm. The Elon Show. Mm. Mm. Um, uh, that was a pretty crazy time. And then, so then after the show, you're like, you were like known as this model. Yeah, I mean, by then I had a little following, like, it, it was picking up. a big following at that time. In, in relative, yes. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like, not, like, not that many people had that much followers at the time, mm -hmm. but it, was, it wasn't, like, a crazy amount. But, like, in, for New York, for, like, in the, you know, like we said in the first interview, in that scene of, like, all those, like, New York groups, that was huge. Yeah, yeah. And then, like, the biggest flex I could get at that time would, was being in that show. And that was, and remember like, I was never tall enough to like really walk, I didn't do shows. That was my first show, period. People would, would tell you that, that you were too short to walk in shows? Yeah. It's such a crazy concept to hear, like you're too short to walk in a show. Like I could wear heels, <laughs> you know? That's true, but I don't know, with, with like men's fashion it's like, I'm like what five ten five eleven. I mean, that, then I was shorter than I am now, and now I'm still you're like six two. <laughs> yeah, I'm six two. I'm going on six three. Okay. <laughs> um, and then so I was just psyched to be part of a show. Period. Yeah. That was so sick. Um, I think where, I think that's why I met. That's why I met Jound. I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had no clue. He was like kind of like a mythical person. Like I first I knew he existed, but I didn't know who he was or what he did. Yeah. Cause like you were super into Ventura, like you knew the ins and outs. I like yeah. only I like liked it and knew about it, but like I had never been to a set. Right, right. I just liked like seeing what they did and like didn't they do Coachella? They did do Coachella. Yeah. Yeah. I remember seeing that shit with the all camo. Mm hmm. And that that's the first time I met Jan, and I was like. But I didn't know it was him to like way after the Yeezy show. It was really bad. True, true. Yeah, that show changed a lot for everyone, I think. That was a pivotal moment for like streetwear and like was the, it, into like the streetwear fashion, like merging into what it is now, I think. I'm trying to think of when I started the hot mess. That was way later. That was probably yeah, like 20, three years later. Yeah. That was like 2016, right? 2017. 16, I started in 16, but I think I had my first show. In, do you feel like Hot Mess was like... Hot Mess was my spaghetti boys and some shit. Yeah. The same way you were like, but that, that was when I... Like, fa fast forward on some shit, like... Like, I just realized I just said like... Yeah, it's all right, it's all right. We uh, say like a lot, all right? All right, we're sorry. Yeah, right. oh, we say like, 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 like. like, like. like. Leave us alone. How about you listen to the interview? Yeah, and leave a like on the interview. Yeah, drop a like. <laughs> um, wait, what? Uh, you started Hot Mess. <laughs> oh, yeah. And for you, that was your Spaghetti Boys. Because you were seeing how I had it as a project, but then you were like, I like kind of want that too. But it was also on some, like, with the mo I think at, at that time I was, like, kind of scared. Because the thing is with male modeling, like... It's a little intense. It's a little intense. Fuck! What is that? Wait, The door? Hi. Yes, come later, please. Sorry, no, no. That's I okay. No, no problem. No, 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 um, fuck, say that whole thing again. I'm so sorry, bro. Um, hot mess. Okay, no. So, oh, I was just talking about like how the male modeling industry. Oh, it was intense. It was it scary? Well, also, like, dudes have a way less, uh, a way smaller, like, longevity. Like, girls last way, way longer as models. Like, right. guys always, they get pumped in, they get pumped out real quick. Like, yeah. they last, like, two, three years, and then they're gone, right? So, like, I was super scared of that happening. I remember mad people telling me, like, like, all right, so you model, but, like, you know, how long, how long is that going to last? So really? Like, people have said that to you? 
Yeah, and when I was a kid, that's what's that's so terrible. fun. Like, I'm literally a kid. Who said that to you? Just like adults, like people, like uh, like makeup artists be like, uh, how, long, how long have you been modeling for? And I'll be like a year. It's like, well, okay, well, you know, you probably got another like four years. Oh, that's so weird. So it's like... What? Yeah, I mean... It makes it very like prostitution -y. It's like, um, all right, we're going to pay you to like come here and do what we want and like take your shirt off or like... Right, right, walk, right. right. Oh, he looks good. Mm. I mean, you know, that, that's to like shine bad light on it, but sometimes it's sick. Yeah, you know, like, yeah, 100%. It's just like, it, it's crazy sometimes you realize like how mean people in the industry are uh -huh. or, or like how pretentious some people could be. So like, I was like, man, fuck this modeling shit. Like, I gotta have like a plan B. Something bigger. Not even a plan B. I, oh, feel, yeah. like, I feel like for you, it was more your canvas. I mean, you yeah. just as a personality. I just had ideas. You have a lot to offer. Yeah. And like, even so, even you saying it's your version of Spaghetti Boys, Hot Mess has its own aesthetic. Yeah. It's like shit you're genuinely passionate about. Yeah. And yeah, I, I feel like I feel like it's like, you know, I, I like modeling, I love clothing, I love like being a part of this because this is like such an awesome like just piece of my life. You spend so much of your time of looking course. at clothes, so it's like I want to be a part of this. But then it's like I kinda want something with more with more substance more more, more substance, substance to partner it. One thousand percent like, really be like yeah, like I'm not. I'm not just a model. I'm not just an image. You know, I'm not just a face. Mm. And I feel like hot mess was that for you. One thousand percent. I also just wanted to, um, well, because I, I was a kid and I had so many ideas and like shooting, being part, like being a model. It's like being the canvas, but I like you're part like, of someone else's. Yeah, yeah. But I wanted to be the painter type shit. So, mm -hmm. like, I was like part of all these shoots. Was like, man, I want to do my own shoots. Right. So then I remember like. You know, I mean, the Catholic story, you've heard it a million times. But yeah, like, tell it again. You know, on Twitter, I follow Noah. I'm like a fan of his work. And the he, human tarantula. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> and <laughs> he's a fan of my work, and I DM him. And then um, he DMs me back, and I'm like, I think I, w I was on vacation. Yeah, that was my first time coming. I had no reason to come here. Like... And I had saved money for a flight. To LA? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. I did this is before I ever stayed at the Chateau. Damn, like, this is the first trip. Yeah, this is the first trip to LA. Like, you saved money to come here? Yes. I, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I, I saved a bunch of money to come here. Um, and I stayed at my godfather's place. Right. Um, in Tarzana. Rest in peace to him. Rest in peace. And then um, it was just like... And then I DM'd and then Noah like quit his job and then he did. So he, okay, you DM this random kid who you've never met. Complete stranger. No, don't know. And you just love his work. You find his work somehow on Twitter. I think he had like two thousand followers or something. Insane. Um, you just reach out to him and he's like, "Yo, let's work." Yeah, I'm like, it's, I was going through the DMs are super like the ideas at the time when you read them on paper are super cringe. I was like, "Yeah, I have like a sick idea for a shoot." It's like. Like a girl, like smoking a cigarette, and it's like blurry. This is what you said? Yeah, yeah. Or like, oh my god, you son of a bitch! And it's like, or it's like this couple in a car, like wearing leather jackets. You know what I mean? Like, but you were in the mood. Yeah, yeah. But I, I mean, at the time, like, as a seventeen-year-old, that shit was sick. Like, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, even the fact that I came through with it, like, so <laughs> this is the part that, like, you know, they know about how me and Noah met, but they don't know about the process of the whole shit. So Noah spends like his last like fucking like 200 bucks because he was like a grocery bag boy I think mm -hmm. and um, he gets on a flight and then he gets here yeah. right and um, he's a complete we've never met I yeah, right. barely follow this man for more than five minutes by yeah. the way. Um, <laughs> and I'm like yo where are you at he's like um, I'm at the airport like I'm, I was just gonna sleep here yeah I was like like what do you mean and he was like, dude, like, I don't, I, don't, I don't have anywhere to stay. Like, I was just going to sleep at the airport every night. Yeah. I'm like, bro, come here. Like, what's wrong with you? Like, and then so I asked my godfather, like, Dorian, I was like, yo, do you mind if um, my friend comes and sleeps here for the next few days? And he's like, yeah, for sure. Like, well, I do, like, uh, do you know him? I was like, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, then I told him that they were, he's a complete stranger, but he just trusts, he just trusted me, which is why he's sick. Right. Um, fully invited, a 
Full blown stranger from Durango, Colorado. They're sleeping in the house. Right, right. Um, could have been a maniac. Could have been a psycho. Could have been yeah. a killer. Um, and we slept in the garage. We like set up these like air mattresses. Yeah. And then we like he had a, his camera equipment, and um, I had nothing. And that's how I kicked it off. Like when we realized like our work ethic was like super powerful together. Like what are like some of the craziest like fan experiences you've had? Because I feel like you have like some of the craziest stories. You're just kind of put yourself out there a lot, so I feel like it happens to you more, and you're kind of good at handling it probably more than I would be. I have like weird fan interactions. Mine are like, they're pretty classic, but you, since you like, you're such a like a comedic and accessible figure and like so friendly and like, I feel like you have the craziest fans. Yeah, um, yeah, sometimes it kind of feels like that and I like, it's not that I don't like it. I just kind of like get confused sometimes as to like, why not you? And why me? What you mean? Just why me? You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so like, I, it'll be so intense. Like, uh, like me and Aaron will go to Coachella, and like this girl runs up, and she's like, "Let me just say, I love what you guys have." <laughs> And Aaron literally has to like Debo this bitch and be like, yo, don't touch him. Like, or like, we're like watching a concert and this dude is like, yo, Kerwin, it's so nice to see you. Like, <laughs> let's get a photo. And I'm just like, come on guys. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like Kerwin talks. Like, like I, it's just, it could be converse. Sometimes it's really sweet. I really do appreciate it when, when someone comes up like respectfully and like, not when I'm eating or at a concert or like obviously in a conversation time. with in, like with, with my wife. And like sometimes it's very, very intense. I like, yeah, I don't know. Another thing is like I'm such a New York character that like a, a lot of people who saw me on something will like See me in five years and just same, that's why the same here. And that's like the worst. So like I, I did this uh this DJ set for for Palm Angels and you were there in New York and we're like Aaron is pregnant. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's just me, Aaron, and then like some security guard they gave us who's not doing anything. Uh, because like people think that the rap like they give the rapper the like serious security. Thing, and then like the DJ is like, no one's gonna run down on a DJ. Yeah. So I'm like setting up immediately. Like this dude starts hopping my leg. He's like, yo man, I, I, I remember I met you like five years ago in the LES. Like we chilling over there. So like when you want, like just come over here, we'll smoke. I'm like, bro, I'm working. <laughs> I don't know you. <laughs> Get off my property. <laughs> Leave my wife alone. Leave me alone. So it's like, then next dude does the same thing. Then the next dude, Aaron is literally pushing these dudes back. Aaron like, was doing, you were better at being the security than the security, which was crazy. It was so You were like asking people to get off the stage. It state. was so crazy. Because I, I, it just shouldn't be like that. Like, I don't know. Like, people just don't think about it sometimes. It's like, I'm a normal fucking person. Like, I feel like more than the other people who are part of it, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just like, <laughs> it's just so easy to like, just be natural. Like, I'm not going to be mean, but just show the fuck out. And like, and then this girl came up and then she was like, oh, um, I remember like, like, like four years ago we met. I don't know if you remember me. We met four years ago at this party and there was no food there and we put fried chicken in the microwave. And I'm like... Get away from me! <laughs> I don't know you! <laughs> so, like, it does freak me out a little yeah, bit. No, I'm not gonna lie. And that's the thing with being from New York, because we were around so much of this shit. So, like, there'll be all these, like, kids. It's not even kids. I mean, no, but, uh, we were, like, really in the streets. Kids are even, like, grown-ass people that are, like... Yeah. Like... Like, 27 Yo, Luca! Yeah. Remember, I ran into you at the Mercer four years ago. I own like, a hot dog marketing company now. Yeah, it's like... We make mustard. <laughs> High-end mustard. Yeah, it's called... Why don't you come to my studio? We also make headphones. Yeah, it's like, man, we're, like, people that feel like they know you because there was maybe some point in your life 
many moons ago that you gave them a time a day. Yeah. But you you never kept up. You never became friends. No. You never. If we haven't talked in more than eight months, I don't know you. All right. So anybody watching that, I don't know you. If we haven't talked in eight months, if we haven't talked in eight months, I don't know you. Oh. <sighs> Ooh wee! <laughs> um, what's up uh, with your sex life? Mm -hmm. Do you ever think you'll find true love, or are you looking for it? Man, that's you know that's the hardest part is uh, trying to like settle down. I mean, you guys inspire me to have a baby. I want to have a baby so bad. You guys look like you're having a blast. That shit is sick. I mean, yeah, like, hmm. <sighs> So my sex life is weird. You're probably the only person I could talk to, to talk to about this too. But I don't know. I mean, you know, I had my fair share of fun when I was uh, in LA shooting Grownish. Like you were having a lot of sex, huh? My sh my fair share of fun. Oh, like sex? No, just <laughs> my my fair share of fun. Oh, like you guys were like playing on set? Yeah, 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 yeah. Hmm. True, true. true. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I've, I don't know if I want to talk about that just because, like, that's one part of the, you know, that's one part of my life the internet actually has no clue about. About your love life? Yeah. I mean, there's just a simple question. My love life? We're working on. We're working on it, you know. I mean, it's so crazy that everybody around is like, dude, everybody's relationship and having fun and it's like but it's also hard you know like <clears throat> I'd say for me like I mean you guys have cracked the code of like you guys are working together and shit yeah. you know what I mean like you guys are like a unit more than like a couple yeah you know what I mean like with me it's like I'm always busy or traveling or working and like I guess trying to find someone that understands that but also has time for me the same way I would have time for them. Mm -hmm. Cause it's like, everybody's like, well, like you should just go for like, you should just go for like a regular girl, you know, like you're around the scene, blah, blah, blah. It's like, that doesn't work. Okay. Right. Like it doesn't, it, like ideally I would love to find like some random chick that like fucking like works at a coffee shop. I mean, why doesn't it work? Because. I'm just kidding. I know why it doesn't work. I mean, before I met Aaron, I went through a lot of the same things, and it's like you meet a normal girl, and then they, or whatever a normal girl is. Yeah. And I feel like we're all so com so complex, but it's like one, there's that detachment, and then it becomes like if you're like excited about something you're doing, you're like being like like a uh, uh, two to like self-loathing uh, or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When it's like, no, I'm just excited, I'm doing something cool. So I mean, I remember you like hated like every girl ever for a minute. Yeah, well, it was, it was just like, it's really hard. Yeah. And I, don't, I don't think people would like know, yeah, you go through it. I mean, you haven't had like a relationship in a long time based off that mm. and not being able, I mean, yeah, what would you say are some of the reasons? Like, would you say the same reasons? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's like, me, it's like, all right, so let's say I go for a regular girl, right? All right, it's cool, it's working, it's like, it's low key, it's tight, right? Yeah, right. Um, I leave for two months for work. Yeah. And I'm like, yo, do you, uh, do you want to come here? She's like, no, I, I, have, a, I have a job, I have right. to stay here. Right. And then you build that disconnect, because it's like, it's two completely different lifestyles. In concept, it's nice when you have it there, but then they don't understand when you have to leave for two months. They don't understand when like you're not responding for a bit, or, like being unresponsive. It's like, yo, I'm in Japan, right? I'm 14 hours ahead. Sorry, I didn't reply to your text. Oh, you know that's a little aggressive mm -hmm. coming from you. Oh yeah, it's not being specific to a certain person or anything. Oh, true. true. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this isn't a direct message to the person that might be watching. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> um, and then, and it's like, then it's like, it, it's super, it's also super cliche to like, 
date a model. But there's a reason why like models date models too. It's like, you know, it, it creature of habit type shit where it's like these people on the same schedule, like, we're, we're both going to Fashion Week. That's not really real. That's like a... It is. Yeah? Yeah, I mean, models date models. True. It's, I mean, I've seen it. I mean, not all of them do, but like, the cliche comes from like, but... Just being in the same world? Yeah, being in the same world and like, working in the same industry, like, b going to Fashion Week, traveling, this, that, the third, it's like the same type of shit. It's like, mm. you're gonna go with somebody that does the same thing as you because they understand it and the, and then you could kind of build off of that. It's like the only type of long distance relationship that kind of makes sense. Right. But then I also hate long distance because I hate texting people. Yeah. So. Well, you also have that phone plan that doesn't let you call long distance. Mm -hmm. You can't afford to call long distance, right? Yeah, no, I can't. So that's also why? Yeah, I have to use the hotel phones. That's true. Um, speak your truth. Speak your truth. That's true. <laughs> um. But I don't know. I mean, you know, I hope I find someone. I mean, you know, I, I always think I find someone and, yeah. and then it doesn't work out. Or they, they rip your heart out and they stomp on it. And then they go, pew, pew. So was I being mean or was I just being protective of my heart? I don't know. The choice is yours. The choice is yours. The choice is yours. Pick your poison. To pick your poison. Pick your poison. Um... It's really crazy you were there the day that me and Aaron met. Wow. Yeah. You were that there, and crazy. I don't think I've ever told the story. To anyone. Yeah, do you want to tell it? I mean, if you would like me to. I mean, it's, it's how you guys met. Yeah. All right. All right, so I'd seen Aaron at a party, but I didn't really say anything, you know? And um, I just said hi to her. I didn't really know um, anything about her. She just looked super cool. And um, like a year later in New York, I was just like checking who saw my story and I saw that she saw it and I thought that she was pretty hot. So, um, uh, so I, I, uh, I had a slid in her DMs and then I said like, uh, I said like, uh, uh, I said like, like, hey love or something like that, which is like really cheesy. <laughs> I just didn't know what to say. And I was like looking at my photos and I was like, what would be something good that like uh, like if you saw my photo, like something that can match that and just <laughs> message where I just said hey love, and, which was weird. Yeah, because that doesn't match anything. No, I was like oh hey love, <laughs> and uh, so I said hey love, and then I uh, I don't know what what she responded. What what yeah what was it? Lol hey. Yeah, she said lol hey, and um. And so I waited till the next night. And you waited. So you saw that and you waited till the next night. And I was like, what the hell do you say to that? Like, oh, hello, hey, what, what do you mean? Am I funny? Like, funny how? So, um, <laughs> so I, I DM'd her the next day. And I was like, Aaron, I need your number. Like, <laughs> I'm serious. In that voice. In that yeah, voice. yeah. Like, that's how I said it in my voice. Yeah. In my head. So then uh, she sent her number and I was on the train back from I don't know where, but I was on the 40, 42nd Street um, uh, train station, waiting for the two train to go back to Harlem. And um, uh, my phone was running on Wi-Fi at the time, like just like audio, you could, you could text some, someone on iMessage or you can audio FaceTime them. And that was just, I, I didn't want to have a phone, nor was I like, I felt like I was ready to have one. Mm -hmm. I was kind of like being like kind of unreachable, but I knew where all the Wi-Fi spots were in New York. Um, yeah, I remember there was even some train stations that had Wi-Fi. Oh, I knew, I knew it all. I knew it all. So I called, I immediately called Aaron on FaceTime Audio, and then um, we started talking, and we kind of like just hit it off immediately, and we were talking for like an hour on the train. I'm on the train, and I was like, and like, I like, I kind of have to get on the train now, so um, <laughs> I'll call you when I go home. Uh, so, got home. Uh, I think I either called her or like my Wi-Fi in my house was just fucked up. So we were just like texting for the rest of the night, and um, and then and then we had agreed to meet the next day. So um, mid midday. Midday the next day, we meet up, 
she like scheduled it so like she could see me while she was like running errands in Soho. Um, so it would be like an hour worth of time um, that I could see her. And <laughs> so, uh, so, so, so I met her in Soho and we started talking and um, you know this more than anyone. When you would see me in Soho, I would have like just always a bag of trinkets for some reason. Yeah, brown paper bag of trinkets. Yeah, so um, like what would be in there? Cigarettes, um, ca like crumbled up cash, some coins, uh, an iPhone 4, a charger, <laughs> a headphone. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we start talking and walking, and when we go to the park in front of uh, La Esquina, uh, which is that little triangle park, and we sit down, and I have my bag, and and then there I have cassette tapes uh -huh. and, and my cassette player, because during that time I was just... Cassette phase, yeah. Yeah, I was just obsessed with cassettes. Um, and I was playing her, like, my favorite cassettes. Like, I had that Astro Gilberto cassette that was, like, fucked up and kind of haunted that had different music on it, and I played, like, like, just a bunch of my cassettes. And I guess she was really into that, but it wasn't, like, a romantic thing in my head. I'm just like, look what I'm into. And... Uh, we were just talking and she was telling me about like herself and then her I was like, um, like like what are you doing after this? And then she was like, um, she had got like I guess these tickets to see the Conor McGregor Floyd Mayweather yeah. fight at like some building rooftop. And with, for context, I ran into him at the park. Yeah, well I didn't get there yet, you son of a bitch. Well did, you're talking about the Conor McGregor fight. I didn't I was well so, <laughs> so, um, so she was like, we're going to go on a rooftop and watch it, just me and my mom. And I was like, yo, this isn't a flex, but um, I know this guy and he has a boat and he's showing the fight on a yacht. Um, so we should go and check that out. <laughs> and then she was like, what? And I was like, yeah, just bring your mom, like tell her to come through. And, um... And, and yeah, so, but you were in that park like a couple seats away on a date of your own, yeah. But you, I was there before, you, I saw you walk into the park yeah. with Aaron, but the reason I didn't come up to you guys is that I have never, ever seen Kerwin with a woman, let alone a woman in public. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, I know I'll this. give him head on like Drake. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, I know this is way too rare. Yeah. <laughs> like, this must be a girl he likes. So that, like, he's trying to talk to you. Like, I think I had texted you. Like, yeah. I was like, yo, bro, you? I'm yeah. Like, yo, look, look. I had no Wi-Fi. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I pretend like, and then we eventually we had eye contact. I was like, but I don't even think I went over and said hi. I said. No, I came up to you when oh, we were leaving. Oh, we yeah. After, I was like. What are you doing here? <laughs> so, so then we went to the fight uh, on on the boat. It was uh, Dwayne's boat, and Pharrell was there, and there was like gambling, but like it was like sweet, and um, and we had fun there. And after that, we went to um, to Up and Down, which uh, which was at the time. At the time, it wasn't that bad. All right, it's not as bad as it is now. I would never step foot in there, or one oak ever, because um, it's so stupid. But it was cool because it was me on a serious look, bro. I have no money. <laughs> all right, I have zero dollars, right? But I'm like one of the most resourceful people, like, like one thousand percent. One thousand percent. So I'm like, I have no money. Um, we can go to this boat. I know there's gonna be food there. I know there's gonna be entertainment. Boom, bam, explosion. All right, I know if I take her to up and down. Bottles. Bottles. Throttles. Full throttle. Full throttle. So as soon as I walked in, it's like the Goodfellas scene when they walk through the kitchen and go to the club. They just open the curtain. We go to the promoter's table. Nobody's there. The promoter's table, for people who don't know, is this one table they save for the promoters. And, you know, unlimited bottles. They bring these, like, dumb models there. And, you know, they get them drunk. But... Me and Luca, being the, uh, the the savants that we were, we knew those people because we would go there. We never paid for a drink in a club in our life. In our life. So whatever. we knew the finesse. So we, we we walk in, they open the curtain. Me and Aaron are looking crummy. We're just wearing whatever, but we just walk in like kings. They escort us to the table. We're like just chilling. Um, and then we start making out, of course. And then um, 
Yeah. And then... Uh, was your first time making out an open down? Yeah, probably. <laughs> you kissed me the whole night. Yeah, I tried to kiss her the whole night. She was. got me drunk. Yeah, and then I got her drunk. Oh, you're like the promoter! You mm. <laughs> proposed to me on the boat, too. You yeah, I did. Girl. Yeah, on the boat, I proposed to her, and I was like, 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 will you marry me? And then she was like, dude, you're fucking crazy. And then I was like, I'm serious. Right? <laughs> I'm serious, okay? Okay. And then, um, so... So anyways, um, so uh, after that, we go to her place, of course, because I'm living in Harlem, like, you know. <laughs> so, uh, so um, um, what happened? Uh, oh, yeah, Aaron, Aaron thought I was 16 this entire time because I had made this fake Tom Sachs passport as a joke on my Instagram. And it said I was 15. <laughs> and it was just a funny troll on the internet. It's like, if you really believe that I'm that young with like a face tattoo, and I'm like... Like you deserve to believe that, because that's... The you deserve to believe it. So it became this rumor because Famous Birthdays did a cover on me on their website. And Famous Birthdays, they do like a bio biography type write-up on a person. And they say your age and where you're from. And it said I was from Kansas and that I was like 15, 16 at the time. <laughs> <laughs> I never confirmed or deny it because I don't give a fuck. That's like hilarious. Yeah, that was funny. So, um, so, <laughs> uh, um, 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 uh, be, be, before, before we have sex, because we had sex, um, she was you like, We had a fair share of fun. We had a fair share of fun. <laughs> um, she was like, I need to see your ID. And then, um, I was like, Nah, 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 swear I'm not 16. I swear I'm not so. Serious. I had asked you before, and you had said like your real age, and then I asked you to see it, and you pulled up a picture of it on your phone. Yeah, I pulled up a picture. Because I was like, no, I was like really serious. And I was like, nah, 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 I swear, take advantage of me. <sighs> take advantage of me, I'm a monster. <laughs> so, um, so then we had we had our fair share of fun, and then after we did it, um, by it, I mean sex. After we had sex, after you had a um, fun, I was like, oh, that was the first time I did anything like that. And then she just bursted out in tears, <laughs> and I was laughing so hard, <laughs> being the monster I was. <laughs> and I was like, no, 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 I swear, I swear. And then since that day, I honestly never left her house. <laughs> um, no? Yeah, no, I never left her house. And it was crazy because it was the first time I really, like, it was really beautiful because it was it was the first time I felt a connection that strong and yeah it's so rare to find that in the superficial world that we're thrown yeah, into you never find that and I kind of I immediately I'm someone who like I know how to read people as soon as they meet them like like within the first five minutes of talking to Aaron I was like damn I could really like spend the rest of my life with this person That's and awesome. it was like really that moment and we were like just living together for three months and. I, I was someone who like, like, uh, like we said in the past interview, it was like, you could see me one day and I'll have like tons of cash for some weird reason. Like, I just figured it out, but then I'll just be broke. But in this case, yeah. I was just broke. So I just had zero dollars. And I'm just like, yo, I like, I, I gotta go home. And she's like, for what? And I was like, I just gotta go home. So I went home and <laughs> I went home and I was like, yo, I can't see you until like I have money again. And then she's just like, um, like you're really fucking stupid. Like, what are you talking about? So I was like, fuck, all right. So I came back and you know, we, we, we figured out ways to like, to make money together and like bond that together. I had a lot of like, I, cause I knew how to just make money on my own. And in New York, you can be broke, but she like taught me how to have substantial, like just be good. And um, even on top of that, we were just like so eye to eye with like where we were in life. She had just moved to New York and um, closed down her business, uh, Shop Jean, mm -hmm. which was like crazy culture, captivating. I remember like just, I mean, so many people, um, so many people did Shop Jean. Like, I remember like going on Shop Jean's Instagram looking for cyber girls to DM. Oh my god. Like, I would, like, yeah. There's you a few girls. 
Yeah, yeah, there was a few, there was a few little shop chain girls that had to shop take chain down. started cyber girls. They started the jowls. They started the buffalo sneakers. They started the 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 choker wave. Like so much of that, because it took from so early. It took like Tumblr and completely added it to fashion. But not only that, it was like the first like dome of like this is where you go to like like before B files. Yeah. Like it was like, yeah. She started this business from like her college dorm like reselling a Chanel bag and then like investing that in her own business and like buying these things from China and like rebranding them and yeah it was really insane so, so so when I learned that I was just like fuck like there's nothing more attractive to me than like a woman who like like just like really like is so like I don't know how to word it correctly but it's just like just really knows her shit and has like really thrived in business and like knows where they want to go yeah and it's like because in so many like prior relationships it was like i felt like i was like some weird like father figure mm -hmm. and i fucking hated that like having to like feel like you have to like foster like and teach you the way and here's like someone who's like flip the script on you do it this way and completely right um yeah so so we were we were we were staying together and then uh yeah, that's that's kind of how we met, but it's crazy. Um, what like maybe maybe four months in, she was like doing consulting, and um, and she was like, I want to help with Spaghetti Boys, and I was like, pivotal moment by the way. Pivotal moment. A lot of people don't know this. We have just had this like the world's worst pop up of all time. And it was at 801 Mateo Street. Edison Chen funded it. I remember that. The clothing Illuminati God. He <laughs> is like the like, like the dark lord of like streetwear. Like he's like a demon. Uh -huh. So he was like, yo, like that, uh, prior story. Anyways, we, we were in LA. We did this pop-up. It was 24 hours a day for five days, Luca. Five days! We had these Mexicans fresh paint <laughs> all the walls yellow. It was the first pop-up. Virgil, out of the kindness of his heart, gave me a second collab, which I like and still thankful to this day because I don't know why he did it. Um, <laughs> this collab was released in this pop-up. Uh, almost nobody saw it. Whoever has that shirt, like it's the rare shirt because the way this pop-up was set up was so terrible. So terrible. We didn't know what we were doing. You flew in just for it. I, I can't. And oh, helped out for it again. You were like coming to help us. <laughs> and I slept. Remember that. I slept on that like this little hospital bed. <laughs> they had like an actual hospital bed in the pop-up. I don't know why you had that. Yeah. And I slept on there. And then that night, I also crashed Nitin's car into, I'll get into that story later. Yeah. Anyways, so we did this pop-up. The brand was going nowhere fast. <laughs> nowhere fast. Austin, again, quit Spaghetti Boys when he saw that the pop-up didn't work. Cause that was it. It was just like, I would only like, I would only see him when we were doing good. It, we would do, cause if, if, if shit wasn't moving, he wasn't there. Yeah. Poor Spaghetti Boys. Mm. And it was just me and Ray. And me trying to guide this fucking ship and not know anything. And, and, and move out of the camera. It was crazy. Because it was like, how the fuck do I do this? And so we weren't releasing anything. Like what we had was, uh, Virgil Heron, then we had the Bernie Sanders tee, then uh, we had the Changes tee, then it was all like shirts. We didn't have a real drop. The LA one was the first one where we had sweatpants and all that. It was going terrible. The manufacturers wouldn't give us our shirts. Shit was going off the wall crazy. Yo, I was stranded in LA. Yo, let me tell you. I was stranded in LA, bro, for three months, sleeping on like everyone's couch. Everyone, bro. Everybody. Everybody in the couch's couch. Zero dollars. Like, made it through three months, and then I was like, oh, but I gotta do the pop-up, I gotta do the pop-up. The last time I got the fucking pop-up, we didn't make any money in profit. Nothing, and if we did, it was like a couple hundred bucks. So, I had nothing. Um, my way of getting out of LA, <laughs> on the last day of the pop-up, I get this hit up from, 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 from Zach from Apartment 200 in, in Canada, and he's like, yo, there's this like Perrier uh, like party we're doing. You can DJ for it and do some kind of art installation with Spaghetti Boys. Ray Austin, nowhere to be found. Nowhere. 
So Correct. it's just me, and I need to get out of LA because at this point I'm going batshit crazy. <laughs> we end up, I, I end up going to, to to Toronto, and I came up. They wanted me to like put photos on the wall, and I was like, no, I'm not gonna do that. I went to Walmart and got like these inflatables and like filled this like 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 niche nightclub with them, and then I DJ and I made five grand. And that I was like, thank God. Fucking went home. Nobody wanted to help me. Not my brothers. Not anyone in my family. I was just stranded. So I go back to New York, right now I'm back on my New York shit. And a couple couple months later, that's when I meet Aaron. Yeah. So I was like completely like just fucked, but also on the verge of like fixing my life. Like yeah, yeah. I, nothing was working. And it was insane. Because I was putting my heart in so much and pushing so hard for this thing, but it seemed like nobody else wanted it. When I met Aaron, so four months later, out of her experience of like being, like becoming a self-made millionaire and then like, but going through like the tax troubles and like losing everything and like rebuilding, like we were on that same page. Mentally, it was so beautiful. And that, I think actually that was more attractive to me when I met Aaron, that she was someone who like got everything and then lost it. Mm. And like, 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 I don't know how fucked up that sounds, but it's just someone It's who, relatable though. It's relatable. It's someone who like put their heart and soul in something so hard to the point where they were like put in the dirt left with no one. And mm. that's how I felt when I met her. And that's why we had that connection. Cause it's like, here are these two like, just fucking like power drives, like meeting each other and like clashing and feeling that. And yeah, that was one of the most beautiful things ever. Three months in, Four months, three months, she's like, I want to help with Spaghetti Boys. I'm like, don't touch it. Like, I want to, like, <laughs> close it down. No one needs to see this shit again. It's a fucking hamster wheel. Like, we're, we fucking suck. She's like, uh, well, like, what do you guys have? We had these, like, leftover, like, Japan graphics because we were going to go with some scammer to Japan and do this pop-up. We had them left over. And, um... Aaron was like, all right, well, look, she made like this whole Google Doc of financials and she was like, we can make 30K in one month like this. Wrote out every single number, every single like uh, tally, all of it. And put the designs in like this like worksheet where it would work of like putting it out. First, was that your first time like seeing structure and something like that? The first, bro, because no yeah. one teaches you this, yeah. bro. And everyone thinks you just make a t-shirt and you become Virgil. And it's, Virgil has his masters, bro. Like, yeah. Aaron has his masters. Like, these people are, like, fucking, like, smart-ass people. Yeah, like, fact. this isn't, like, you put, you also put years into this shit. So, anyways, she shows me that shit. I'm like, what the fuck? Brings in this, uh, th this tech web guy from L.A., steals him from Young Jake Circle, puts him in, in, in our apartment. So, now it's a, it's a one-room apartment. He's sleeping in the living room. And, and he's moved in now. And he's supposed to be doing web. So she's like, he can work on Spaghetti Boys. Like, literally, like, put the pieces together. Mm -hmm. We start sitting down, having these meetings with, like, Austin, Ray, Corey now, who's, like, working in web. And, like, we're doing this shit. And, like, we're, it's working. Like, we, we do the first drop. It went amazing. Like, everyone was supporting it. And finally, like, we're finally, like, starting to reap yeah. benefits of, like, working hard. And it's because it's structured. And... And yeah, it's it's not just oh let's just like do this spastically like we were actually like making money. Aaron was like, you know Rossi from Milk. Why don't you hit up Rossi and ask if you can get a desk at Milk Milk Studios? Fact. I hit up Rossi. He gives me the basement. We're working out of the, the jam room in Milk. office. And he gave us that, and that was like, it was so much that changed in my life because of Aaron. And yeah, yeah, and and I feel like well the group is on a hiatus now. It, it got to the point where we were pushing so hard, but there's only like so much you can push for like a team of five to have like everything they ever wanted. And it's like, it's more on like what they want. And yeah, I don't know. I still think about that to this day because I, I get the like the, people say like the you change thing. or like the, it's like, no, you kind of like, you, you grow, you grow. Not only, you don't grow apart because we didn't grow apart. It was, we, are becoming adults like we have yeah. to make this real and yeah there's no like we were we're putting out so much shit it's like you got to keep going and yeah so we just got on a hiatus and honestly like for me shit didn't get 
as amazing. I didn't see things clearly until I was able to do it on my own mm -hmm. and like realize that I could have been just like doing shit on my own. Yeah. And like you don't know your self value until you're like kind of left alone. Yeah, because you were always. I mean, you were you were never depending on anyone. Dependent. It was just like I need to come in with a team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if there's an L, I'm not. You were trying. The to, you were always trying to carry mad people. Of course. But you didn't have the infrastructure or knowledge at the time. You had the... I had enough knowledge to get us in the room. I had enough knowledge to know where we needed yeah, to go. exactly. But I didn't know the real... And you had the energy. willpower to, like, carry through it and do it. And but, I did it for everyone. But you couldn't You couldn't do that forever. So that was, I think that's why it was it's such, a, such a pivotal moment when you met Aaron, too. And why, like, a lot of people ended up, like, you know, getting mad at you or getting mad at Aaron saying you changed. But I, the reason I think... Well, obviously, where we still friends, I was one of the only people that was like, you didn't... Yes, nigga, finally you changed. Do you know what I mean? Like, Well, this you, was the thing, because at the time, you were the only other person that was, like, really succeeding and traveling the world and, like, seeing the fruits of life that you can get when you're, like, focused and shit. So you related on that schedule. You were tired of just seeing me broke. Yeah, I didn't want to see that shit. Yeah, no. And it was like, now we're really putting our ideas into fruition, and it's working. It's like, take that and run with like it. When people started seeing you being professional, they like were getting pissed. It's this, that, the third saying like, oh, this stick is mad. And now it's like, bro, like, him being broke isn't sick. Mm, like, no. if you actually care about him, you should be happy for him, for him, about him like working this hard. There is this thing with like artists where it's like, okay, so. They want to um, see you struggle. Huh? They want to see you struggle. Well, no, not even that. There's people like, like maybe like Jim Joe or like Neckface. Yeah. Where you can bring up where like they can have such a, or even Apex Twin. Yeah. Where they can have such a hard underground following to the point of like, okay, you can be sick for the rest of your life for the New York people that are into that shit, or you can actually fucking just like, do everything and not take that into consideration and yeah. let it stop you. A lot of people think too hard of what the public is gonna say. So everything they do has to be like this rare thing. Everything they do has to be mystique and fucking vague. It's like, no, I, my vision was to just produce the greatest shit, was to just show that it is possible to fucking be in the projects from Harlem drop out of high school and then build this fucking machine. Yeah. And get in the doors and break in at like at fucking all costs and risk everything. But like, yeah, that, that was more that was more my drive and what I stood for and and that's what happened. It's it's yeah. Yeah. I, I really I've never talked about it. It's something I don't like talking about. Yeah. But it's like something I really like just need to get off my chest. I feel like yeah, it's really crazy. One of the most beautiful things, though, was like finding out I was gonna be a father, yeah, and so finding sad. out Aaron was pregnant. And I think when I found that out, it, it kind of just inspired me to like just go like just oh, turbo. Yeah, no. I mean, your priorities completely changed when you found out you were like about to be a father. This thing, you went like full blown tunnel. Like, I right, fuck all this extra shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, no. I mean, you're already on some like no fuckery shit, but then it was like no space for even like a breath of fuckery once you find out you're about to be a father. It's so amazing. Like not even a speck of fuckery. It's so crazy. It's but, so crazy. I mean that's what's so sick like and so much people were doubting you too like this nigga's gonna be a father like yeah you know everybody was like Carolyn's gonna be a dad like bro how? Does that, it's like you first off you have no clue what he's been doing if you haven't been paying attention yeah. to like you had already changed such drastically and like that only made you more focused. Yeah. But like now I think now people are starting to understand like, oh, this nigga's actually like serious about this shit. It's crazy when I think about it. I feel like I kinda get off on like having to, to prove people wrong and when I got like the pencil face out too, it was really a, a commitment to like I'm gonna do this like with a pencil on my face. I'm gonna like like I was a dickhead with the pencil on my face until I started like killing shit to people. Yeah. Or like people will see me as like an influencer or like like a face and just not think that you could like break that. I feel like I always even when I started like seeing Aaron, it was like, no, you can be happy in a relationship and talk about it openly. 
like it, this game doesn't just have to be male dominated dudes who like just jump around like at parties like this you know what i mean like yeah. you can be in love and have a work structure and like really be passionate about what you're doing and i feel like even with with having a daughter um it's the same thing it's like you still you still can keep killing it like having a kid doesn't shut down your life no at all it's, it's the I same think, way being in love doesn't i mean tell me if i'm wrong with that I get, like a lot of people do think obviously like you lose your life when you have a kid but it's not i think from the way i've seen it and look at it, it's like it's a new chapter and also it's just time management it's time management it teaches you how to grow up like you could still have a kid and yeah. have a life there's plenty of people that have a kid and have a life. I mean, I, I hate to bring it up every two seconds, but like even Virgil, for example, has a full-blown family, yeah. but any second he has to go back to, like, he left on Sunday night straight back to Chicago. To yeah. see, you know what I mean? Like, so Matthew he, Williams, who yeah. will bring a league to a show. Exactly. Like, he brings his family everywhere. Yeah. So it's like, there's no excuse. You don't lose your life yeah, no, when you no, have a kid. No, if, no. You just grow with your family. And if anything, it's sick that you get to expose your family to that stuff, you know what yeah. I mean? So, I'm super excited. It's insane. You're gonna be the Godfather. That's true. Official announcement. Uh, Waffles Godfather. <laughs> I make sure to be at my best. Like your Godfather to you is like what you're gonna be to Waffle. That's so crazy. That's so crazy. That's insane. I can't believe it. Yeah. That's it's so gonna insane. be insane. What should we call it? Um. When's the current Frost Waffle uh, Waffle Frost talks? Hmm? We need the waffle frost in our game. It's coming in the summer. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming in the summer. At the hospital. At the hospital. <laughs> With the mic. Mm -hmm. It's so like, like still crying. So like, what's how was the energy in there? <laughs> <laughs> so you spent nine months inside of Aaron. Um, <laughs> what did you think of the Kardashian Christmas party? <laughs> 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 what did you think of the Coachella? <laughs> like, did you like Cara Carabinito? Like, tell me. <laughs> <sighs> that was hot. That was fire. Um, tell me. Um, tell me about your dog Turbo. Cause it's like you had this dog and he kind of went MIA. You never saw him again. Yeah. So Turbo, I had gotten with my ex, um, and time seemed like a great idea. It was a great idea. It's a beautiful dog. And um, tell me this, right? So, you know, grownish. Mm -hmm. Go out there and film grownish. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm busy, you know, I'm busy. By the way, by that time, we're broken up. We're right, broken right, up, right. My dad's like, yeah, I'm going I'm to take, take care of this dog. Right. I'm going to take care of it, right? Um, come to find out. One day, I like go back to New York. I'm like, "Where's Turbo?" Right, right. He's like, "Oh, um, I gave him away to like a family in Georgia." Wow. Whoa. I was really pissed because I didn't get the chance to figure out if he was like, "Yo, either you figure out how to take care of your dog." Yeah, or we can give it away. Or we can give it away. I would have fi obviously figured out a way to take care of my dog. Yeah. I would have, like, got brought him to the chateau. Or, you know what I mean? Like, they're dog-friendly here, bro. Like, yeah, I would yeah, just... Yeah. You know what I mean? I was really pissed, and it was really annoying, but... Do you feel like you would ever forgive your dad for doing that? I mean, he's my dad. I mean, it's, it's mad annoying, and I'm always going to hold him accountable for that. And yeah. every time... Uh, you look at a dog, you'll take a turbo? Yeah, or anytime he says anything about like a pet animal, like I like make him feel bad about it. Yeah. Um, and I think it's starting to sink in, because he he's just like, oh, oh, instead of like trying to come up with an excuse. Right, yeah. right. Do you feel like, like, what are some of the craziest sacrifices you've had to make, like, due to your career? Ooh. I mean, sacrifices that we both made, I think, was, you know, separating ourselves from a lot of people. And, like, we kind of went over it, I think, a little bit in the last episode, where it's just, like, hanging out 
with like all those gormless stoners or like hanging out with all these people, even if they're not like that, like you know, like drug addicts or this, that, they're like some people are so toxic to your like to your personal life, and yeah. they keep a very toxic relationship, which makes it hard for you to focus and hard for you to like be on your like a one shit and like you know where always people are always more comfortable with stuff that they know so it's so hard to always separate yourself yeah from like somebody that you're super tight with yeah but then realizing that time is like extremely valuable yeah and you get to that age of feeling like that and there's almost nothing you can do about it because you really have to kind of just grow yeah and they should be growing with you it, exactly it's like you know like I feel like we grew together yeah because we always supported of each other and even when we weren't when we were at different levels we always try to like see how we could help how each we other could support each other instead of being like you know what yeah, I mean like right, 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 so right. much people like it'd be too, too many like friends are like more annoyed by your success yeah. than like happy and trying to like also get there yeah yeah like when you saw me do sick shit you were always like super proud of me and you're like even during fashion I was like you should come out to fashion remember when I was gonna I was gonna take you out as my bodyguard yeah that's like, crazy and you're like and then when you were and, and then next thing you know you actually fucking went to fashion week yeah. on your own yeah. got your own bag there yeah like figured it out like you know this is the thing it's like with so many you can only carry people so much and you can't help people that don't want to help themselves and you should always be your own priority. You can't put other people in the forefront unless it's obviously Aaron and Walt, you know what I mean? Like, that's yeah. your direct family. Right, right. But it's like, so much people just had to go. Right, I mean, right. that's that sacrifices you made too. Like, yeah. like, all right, like, I tried to do this shit yeah. for fucking years, yeah. but I gotta go. Yeah. Like, I'm gonna keep going. I don't know what y'all niggas about to do. Y'all complaining over there. Yeah. I'm about to go over there. Yeah. You know what I mean? And um, I think, you know, this is this is a part of the interview where it's like part one is mad nostalgic and sweet. Yeah. And then that's but like, part two, reality hits. Reality hits. Real, like, yeah. 100%. Like, not everybody, you know, the, we talk we talk about where all this shit started, but a lot of people didn't make it up didn't to this point. Didn't make it up to this point. Because so much got in their way. They yeah. got in their own way. Yeah. And like... Other sacrifice I had to make, I guess, was like, um, I mean, just for, you know, even business sacrifices, I'm not going to talk about deals, but, you know, there's been certain predicament, there's certain predicaments where it's like this job or this job. Right, right, right. I, you know, I could make a shit ton of money doing this, but will I look corny or right. can I build a relationship with this brand for less money? Yeah. And then times where like, you know... Um, yeah, how do you feel about, like, do you ever, like, want to be normal? Um, yes and no? Yeah. Yeah. One day I definitely want to go back to, you know, but, but it sounds pretentious, right? Yeah, yeah, because everyone would say that, but it's like... But it's like, yo, people forget how exhausting it gets to, like... And the thing is, I'm not even that famous. No, no. Right, like there's... And I would say the same thing. Yeah, yeah. And like, that's why I said even earlier, like, why? Yeah, like, we're not even celebrities. Yeah, but no. it's like, we're public figures. Yeah. That, you know, we're, we're part of this culture and this scene. And it's like, holy shit, man. Like, the... And it, this is, you know, the kids might not understand this and they're going to, like, comment, like, the yeah. most annoying shit. I was going to say that. The comment, oh, so it's so, such so, 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 story. It's like, um, I love, like, eating. Yeah. And, like, hang, hanging out with people uninterrupted, which is something <laughs> that we all used to be able to do. Yeah, yeah. But it's like, back to you saying, but even it's like you're having a meal and it's like some random fucking person, like... Mm -hmm feels like they know you because they see you on the internet and they like want to sit down and talk to you and it's like or even them shit are like 
just little things. I mean, sometimes it's it, sometimes it's advantages because like we're at a place and like we'll get like I went to, sometimes I go to Big Berry and the person there's a fan and I get free yogurt. Wow, oh, that's pretty cool. That's, that's sweet. $6 off. The same way it's sweet sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's it's just a thought that's like ah yeah. uh, like thanks for the yogurt yeah. like you know it's tight, but uh, it's it's advantages the same way it's the disadvantages because sometimes it feels like we have no privacy like yeah. You know, and I can only imagine how bad it is for actual celebrities, bro. Yeah. Like, holy shit. Like, people that get followed by paparazzi, it's like, bro, yeah. like, we try to, like, go to stores and, like, walk around our own city or, like, even drive around LA and, like, have meals and we're, we can't, yeah. like, catch a break. No. And I just miss when I was, like... And the connection, the connection, I think, on my side is even... Also with you, you can definitely relate to this, is, like even more on the family side mm -hmm. and you start losing ways of like normal communication with your family yeah yeah like i rarely like, talk to my family you rarely do i mean you know like I, I i try to like you know i don't talk to my mom close to as much as i should yeah i'm, I'm not i was texting my dad back it's like but do you think that's because of the weird energy of like your your success or your earnings of just making it off because in their heads now, it's like Luca, my son, but also Luca, the superstar. Yeah. And you start to feel bad, and it becomes like ICC, which means I could cry. I could cry. But it's like, because these are the people that like, do, do like, think about you, that are related to you, that care about that you care. and shit. And it's like, sometimes you like catch yourself not thinking about them. Yeah. But that's because there's like, this is, this sounds so fucked up, but it's like, Mm. We, to a lot of family members, we are what they're looking at all day, like, because they're so proud of it. It's like, oh my God, like, yeah, yeah. God, oh my God, Luca, blah, blah, blah. But we're outside doing this shit, and we have to think about this person, and that yeah. person, and that meaning, and that thing we gotta do later. Yeah. But also, like, what am I, how do I feel? What am I gonna do? What, yeah, what I have how to, do I feel eternally? Yeah, it's like, this shit is a lot to handle. And it's like, you know, the scene right now is like such a crazy place. We I, we can't I can't tell if it's at its peak or it's still peaking, but there's like a million and one things happening, and we're all this the, like the same way those we've all had pivotal moments up to this point. This is st every day is the most pivotal moment yeah. now. Yeah. Because we're in a weird climate of like, this is the first time any of this shit has happened. Right, right, right. In right, terms right. of the scene, in terms of the infrastructure. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, all right, so you could be a photographer and like a designer and like this, mm -hmm. but you could also like be an actor and be a singer and like be a fucking sculptor. Like, right. But you could also not be any of those things and just be on the internet and yeah. also make money off that. Yeah, yeah. But how do you separate? Sometimes it's hard to even separate an influencer from an actual artist. Yeah, right, right. Because you like now it's looked at as a, like a demeaning term. Yeah, that's kind of. And like it's all pushed on the same platform. The same platform. They're not in different places. No, no, no. So it's like, what the fuck is What's going the on? What's the What's the meaning? What the hell is going on? Yeah. yeah, that shit is crazy. Yeah. So it's like. We're all experiencing something new. We don't know what's about to happen. I mean, we're trying to make the culture as we go. Yeah. But we're using the information we have around us, which is also all brand new. Yeah. It's like, okay, so like, having a brand now is completely different than having a brand back then. Yeah. There's like literally tiers of brands. Like the fact that some people are like, oh yeah, I have a t-shirt brand. <laughs> like, not streetwear. Yeah, no. Not, not merch, a yeah. t-shirt brand. Okay, but tell me how you got into acting, bitch. Um, <laughs> the real story. You always wanted to act. I remember reading scripts with you in your home, and now you're a full-blown actor. You were like, yeah, I know I asked the question, and then I say something right after it, but that's because I'm like thinking as I talk. Um, you are one of the first people that I've seen that could like read lines. I could read like a whole paragraph. And then after saying it twice, you just have it down pat. It was one of the most amazing things I've seen when you were a kid. Yeah. 
Um, what made yeah? Because and you and you, and you made your you you wanted uh, you were doing acting in high school too. Mm-hmm. And a little bit prior. What's yeah. up? Well, like I was born because now you're in a set. Yeah, that shit's crazy. And you're an actor. I'm an actor. Yes, you're an actor. Okay. Well, because people don't really understand that you're a growing actor, and now you're in a new movie, and that's you, and you're also in growing a show, and you have some other things happening. I'm not sure you team. That's me. Yeah. Um, but what I'm trying to say is just like. Uh, no, but you don't understand. <laughs> like, when you act, like, you act. Like. No, but. Can, mm, the, but. There's like uh, people. You don't understand. Like, there's rappers. Like, like I used to rap. And I used to always say, when I spit. <laughs> when I spit, I spit. No, but. Go ahead, tell me. All right, so um, but, uh, the origin story, me wanting to act as my um, my uncle, who had died on uh, my third birthday. Mm-hmm. Um, I right, never so really knew him, but he, his name is Tara Robert, and he was an actor. And I remember like hearing all about him, but then like seeing him on the TV and in movies, and they'd be like, yo, this is him. Yeah. Like, what do you mean? He's not dead, he's right here. Right, right. So I kind of like the concept oh. of like being able, yeah, it's, it's, so it's sweet. It comes from a sweet, dark place. Jesus. Um, and then, Holy shit, that's yeah. deep. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Um, so then I was like, I want to be an actor too. Oh. And then, um, I got super into movies as a kid. Yeah. And then my dad took put me to New York Film Academy when he lived on I didn't talk about it when he lived on uh, 14th Street when he was managing this bar and he was like had like three jobs. And then New York Film Academy was directly next to this bar that he managed and he took me there. Yeah. And I took acting classes and I took acting classes with this woman called Sheila Gray. That's where I met uh other girl that I shot for Hot Mess, Chelsea Lopez. But um then for high school, when I moved to America, I also still thought I wanted to be an actor. I didn't know I wanted to be in fashion yet. What? Because from a European perspective, I always wanted, I was looking at America, also American dream shit. Right, right, right. I'm going to move to America and become an actor. Right, no, that's fine. There you go. Um, and then obviously, like, what happened in New York completely changed. So I went to Lord Manhattan's Arts Academy, which was like a, a sick school. It, honestly, I'm so glad I went to that shitty public school. Mm-hmm. It taught me so much and like made me into like a real human, you know? Yeah. And like experiencing like just a crazy shit like an LES. Like, yeah, deep down you're a hood LES kid. Yeah. Um, so I took the drama major. And then two years in, I was like, I already like started to get into this fashion. I was like, man, man, fuck this acting shit. I'm off this, but I gotta finish school. Yeah, right, right. So um, and I'm starting to get into my fashion. I'm starting to get into my drip. So um, fuck it, man. I was just like, but then I ended up acting because I ran to Kenya Barris, a classic story. I ran to him at Soul House and back at Chateau <coughs> when I was in Haiti working on um, that Unrelated Garments thing, trying mm-hmm. to raise money for Haley. And he got on the phone with us and was like, yo, like, we want Luca in the show. Like, yeah. We want to write him in as a guest star. Yeah. Like, he doesn't have a role, but we'll make him a role right now. Mm-hmm. Just because he fucked with my energy. So cool. And I was like, you know, I'm always, the, I mean, they were the same reason I started Hot Mass. So the same reason I'm, you know, I was trying to, ch- do something new. Either it was like, you know, the second hot mess we tried to make that installation, like, it's trying to like do new things with books or et cetera, et cetera. It's like, I'm not mad at a new venture. Yeah. And I was like, you know, this is what I wanted to do as a kid. Like, why not try it now if the opportunity falls on my lap? Yeah. Well, especially with all the contacts you have now, but even aside from that, it's like, I never really got to pursue this. Yeah. So then I was like, fuck it, let me try this out. And, um, I did, and like I, I, people like fucking loved it, and it's pretty crazy because it's like I didn't 
And then the season after that, it was like season two and a half, it's like I kind of turned into like a main character, like popular demand. Yeah. Well, unbiasedly, I watch a show and I'm just like, damn. Like, that's a little good. Like, you really are like the most captivating person on the show, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Like, you really just play yourself so well and people don't understand that like, playing yourself isn't that easy. Yeah. It really isn't. Because you have to find the good things about your attributes and then kind of like spit them out in this way. And like, but also your stoner on the show, which like isn't true so, yeah. in real life, but you mix your character into that and it's like a more kind of like... It's like finding the gray area of like, hmm, like how do I like water, how do I make myself more palatable for a larger audience by keeping my integrity, but also like being this character? Because yeah. this isn't Lucas Abad, this right. is Luca Hall. So there's got to be a, sli a slight separation yeah. for you to understand that they are these are two different people. Yeah. Because I don't want to just be, you know, now I want to act and start doing new things where I'm like completely a different person. Yeah, right, right. And that's the thing with like Gronish. It was kind of dipping your toes in the sand. He, yeah, whatever the fuck that means. Oh, I now actually just understand what you're trying to say, but yeah. it's People like normally say yeah. water. <laughs> but it's like now, mad people. But imagine like, dipping your toes in the sand. It's nice and warm. Yeah. Um, and then so. But now you want to break out of your comfort zone. Yeah, but everybody like. And dip it in the cold water. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. there you go. Mm -hmm. And it's like I'm getting all these offers for like do kind of the same thing I'm already doing but I really want to challenge myself like, yeah because you don't want to be typecaster yeah like I don't want to be the chill cool stoner kid yeah and, yeah for the rest of my career in terms of acting like I want to like fucking change branch my out. hair I yeah. want to fucking branch out become a new person method act you know but it's hard it's like you know I'm gonna have to maybe do like a few indie movies and like but I'm down to do like low budget shit like because I've also set the infrastructure of being able to like do things that don't pay that much. Yeah. But then that hopefully if I do that kind of stuff it'll catapult yeah, me to a new level of like to new heights in terms of acting. Are you going to take improv classes? I already did that, but no, I don't, I don't think so. Yeah, oh, that's true. That's true. Um Yeah. I think this is long enough. Wait, so you and Yara really like are going out in mm -hmm. in real life? Huh? Yara from Greenwich. Yara Shahidi. Team Zuka? I'm Team Zuka. Thanks for tuning in. Luca, thanks so much for coming on my show. Of course. I love you so thanks much. Thanks for having me. You're the greatest friend a guy can have. Vice versa. Mm. Thank you, Bruce. Yeah. Mm. Carwin talks. Lucas about answers. Well, no, this episode was a bit like Luca talks. Luca talks. To Carwin. And he talks to him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we talk together. We, we, we under, talk. Under any weather. Under any weather. Check you later. Check you later. What are you doing after this? Mm -hmm. What are you doing after this, Bruce? Um, I have a meeting with an actress because I want her to be part of, potentially part of the script that I'm working on, like the film. Ooh, thank you, thank you. All right, thanks so much for tuning in, guys. We'll catch you later. Cha-cha! Cha-cha!